Hello people, this is a quick look at the HBI RS4 Sport 3 Creators Edition chassis. I've bought this so I can build a project car to use to rally around a local park. So in this video, I'm just going to do an unboxing of this chassis and have a look at it and see why I think it's suitable. And then also at the end of the series, I'll be giving away this vehicle or one like it in order to be in with the chance of winning this car once it's complete and once I've finished creating the videos with it. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. Uh, once my channel gets to a thousand subscribers, I will pick one of the first thousand subscribers and as long as they live in Europe or the UK, I will post this out to them. So yeah, it's that simple. This uh, currently sells for £110 is what I paid for it. So if I open it up in the box, you get the foam bumper and a couple of standoff mounts, body post mounts, body pins. Uh, that's that. Um, those I believe are for mounting the electric motor. Those I'm not 100% sure, I'll have to check the manual. Uh, get some double sided tape and a servo saver, some screws. And you have some additional suspension post mounts um, and these look like the front hub mounts you get a few spaces for the suspension and then there's some optional valves for the shock setup so you can see one of them has three little holes one of them only has one hole and so this will go inside the shock absorber and obviously the one with three holes is going to allow more oil to flow through it faster and so it's going to affect how much damping there is on the shock absorber. We've got, this is a suspension tower and an optional spur gear. And then we've got hex drive and wheel nuts. Right, so if we look at this overall chassis design, you can see that they've uh, sealed off the differentials and the center shaft and it also has like a nice little cover dust cap here for the spur gear. If we have a little look, we can open this up. So one screw, just pop this up. You can see the cover pops off and then you've got your spur gear in there. You can see there's a small little lip on there so to pop this back on you just tuck that and then push it across and then you have actually I'll leave this off for now actually, you have this uh, speed mount for the motor which is quite nice as well the way that this has been designed You can see like your motor mounts on those two screws. You can see it's off center. So once this goes back in there, if you rotate this, the drive shaft on the motor moves in an elliptical pattern. So it'll just come closer and further away to the spur gear, which makes it really nice and easy to make adjustments. The other thing that a lot of people talk about it's accessing the drive shaft from the bottom of this. So if we just uh, have a look at that.
Okay, so after pulling those screws off, you can see you have good access to the main prop shaft. And it looks like you've just got to pop out this uh, steering linkage in order to pop the whole drive shaft out, which is quite nice. I guess it makes it, again, easy to work on and service, so that's a, a, a bonus. We flip it back over, so if we have a look, um, it would just be these two screws here and here. They would need to come out in order to uh, then slide the drive shaft out. Uh, whilst we've got it up this way, if we can take a look inside the tray for the radio gear. You can see there's a recess in there, which is uh, would allow you to put an O-ring in there to seal it. And again, on the lid, you also have a recess in there. So you could put a water seal on there to keep the water out and just have a look where the cables come through. You can see you actually have that little gap in there. So once you've uh, fed the cables through this little gap here, I guess it'd be easy enough to just even use blue tack just to uh, push into that the excess once the connectors are through. And that would seal it up pretty nicely uh, keep all the dust out, keep any water out, definitely make it splash proof. So that's also quite nice. Um, let's have a look at the suspension on this thing. So in terms of the suspension design, you have this uh, single wishbone with just the control arm across the top. These are not great because there's a lot more rock in them than with a double wishbone design. I guess it saves some weight um, and it also makes it quick to work on if you've just got to pop these little knuckles off. Uh, they are pretty tight, but you just get a screwdriver under there and you can normally just pop them off. So yeah, they just pop off like that and then obviously you can get to the dock bones. Um, so I guess it makes it maybe a little bit easier for servicing, uh, cleaning it up and then re-greasing it. Um, but then again, you get this rock and you can see like, I've already opened the, this one up and I've added some shim washers in the scap here. Um, and that's to get rid of the rock. But if you have a look on the front axle, you can see I've shimmed one side of it. Uh, but not the other, you can see just there. So this side here has been shimmed up, whereas this side here is how it comes out of the box and you can see just how much play there is on that assembly. So I would recommend maybe getting a five pound packet of shim washers. The size is um, three mil inner by six mil outer. I got 20.3 millimeter shims and 20.1 millimeter shims um, and that will be enough to do all of the joints on this car. One thing that I will mention that I wasn't too happy with is obviously I took this car out and had a look at it and on this front uh, st steering assembly um, it felt like one of these was cross threaded and it almost rounded over on me uh, as a result of it but I think it's the main uh, standoff rod. Uh, the threading doesn't quite go deep enough for the screw. And so the screw's bottoming it out and having to thread the inside of that, which isn't, isn't great. But I mean, it's not a super expensive chassis. So I mean, what can you expect? Let's have a look at the differentials on this. Um, so I think it's just the four screws here and then pop the shocks off. So yeah, that's very nice and easy to, to gain access to the differentials. And if I just um, pop these knuckles off, one side of the suspension should do it. Yeah, so you can see it's just four screws 
and then you have full access to the differential, which is really nice and easy to work on. I think there's actually a grub screw. Yeah, there you go, that one there. If you tighten that up, you can lock these differentials up just by doing that, which is quite nice, quite handy. So if we have a look at this lower AR assembly, actually, while well, we're here, uh, you can see in order to remove the A-arm, you just have to pop off those two screws from underneath, and then this arm will lift up. And I believe there's a pull joint in this side, so it should just rotate out without you having to remove this. But I mean, obviously, if you needed to, you can completely disassemble this. Yeah, you can, you can easily, if you snap one of these in a crash, you can change it in a matter of minutes. You just remove those two screws, pop the knuckles off like we did to access the diff cover, and then you can swap this out really easily, which is nice. The main reason why I've uh, chose the chassis for this build is because it's really easy to work on. So let me pop this back together. So, yeah, I mean, overall, there's a lot to like about this car. It is really easy to work on um, and really easy to service uh, if you crash it. Um, in order to repair it they've made it so it's quick so you can get back out get back out as soon as possible just take a look at the shocks as well you get threaded shocks with these but they are plastic I almost thought you might get black metal shocks but guess not at this price point. I have ordered a bunch of hop-ups for this as well um, and so in the next video I'm going to be looking at modifying it but just for now I was just looking at the basic assembly of it. And the other thing that's worth noting on this is that the plastic is quite soft on this build. I mean you saw it with the lower prop shaft cover you can see it flexes slightly, but you can get a carb in one of those, um, which would be a nice little uh, first mod. Um, and then if you have a look at the suspension arm here, you can see when you press it, it does flex like the, the lower A arm is twisting just under the pressure of the suspension. So if that was on the axle, it's the same thing, maybe le slightly less leverage from the axle position. But you can see the whole arm itself is flexing and twisting. So metal, you can get rid of that if you put metal arms on here. Um, there is some benefit to having the plastic ones. Obviously they're very robust and they're difficult to snap because they're chewy like that. You know, you can take pretty heavy impact. And it's uh, it's gonna come back, like bounce back to its shape, which is good if you're just planning to thrash this around the car park, you know, and you might be hitting into some walls. You see, it does it on the front as well. It's rolling the caster as I uh, depress the suspension there. But again, I think some of that you can get rid of just by using the shim washers because there is some play in here. Um, just because of the manufacturing tolerances, but then some of it is just down to the fact that this plastic is designed to be flexible, and part of that is so it can absorb an impact without uh, you having to order spare parts straight away. It's a bit of a benefit, and it's also a bit of a a bit of a letdown because it's. I would prefer to have tighter steering. You can see that's a bit sloppy, it's a little bit chewy. Um, and obviously there's enough momentum in the car and weight transfer for that to have an impact on the handling. 
but it's it's fine for what I intend to use it for but I definitely think like the aluminium lower A arms are going to make a big improvement uh, to the overall handling if you were to be racing this on a track you'd want to tighten that up a lot because that is um, yeah, that's all over the place uh, that's the one that I've shimmed up already what is it see just how much rock there is in that so that's fine for for rallying and it's fine for just hobby if if you're a beginner this is an ideal chassis for you because it's just it's simple it's easy to work on it's robust and it's forgiving there is quite a bit of twist in the chassis as well you can see it's not that rigid so it's maybe not the most uh, performance orientated road car but it's definitely like a really good entry level chassis this um, what I will say is that it's probably a lot more expensive to build this um, kit uh, this creators edition because you can buy a pre pre-built ready to run kit for around two, 250 pounds, between 240 and 260 I've seen them go for. Um, and that comes with everything. So in order to get this up on the road, you need quite a few bits, like you need the battery, battery charge, well, I don't think the ready to run kit comes with a battery charger, so, but it does come with a battery. Um, but you would need a battery, radio gear, motor, the speed controller basically. Um, and then you don't get wheels with it either. No wheels, no tires, so you gotta get that. You gotta get a body shell for it. And all of those add up. So this is 130 quid less than the ready to run version. And it is gonna be tough to try to get everything else uh, that you need to bring this up to the same standard as the ready to run kit with 130 pounds. That said though, you have the flexibility of building it yourself and just getting the parts that you want from the start as opposed to buying it with the stock motor. If you're just gonna replace that and the ESC anyway, then this is probably a better route because ultimately, I guess, if you're going to replace it anyway, you're saving money. But yeah, so join me next time. I'll be looking at how I can modify this to increase the ride height and make it suitable for off-roading 